Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Nina. If you are new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you. And if you're not new, thanks for coming back. We haven't done a lyric breakdown in a bit, but if you wanted to see my other lyric breakdowns, I've done quite a few of them and I made a playlist, so I'll link that up here and down below if you wanna go check those out. But today, I thought I would break down a song from Midnight's because we haven't quite done that yet. I did like a full album reaction with some of my thoughts on all of the songs, but I didn't do any deep dives into to the lyrics of any one song. For some reason, I just wanted to start with this one. And this is the last song on the 3AM version album. And it's also a song that is in my top three. I don't, I keep going back and forth between which is my number one song, but this one is definitely in my top three, probably top two. And that's Dear Reader. And I love this song so much. And I have such a great appreciation for the lyrics in this song. And and everyone has their favorite song on Midnight's or whatever, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best song for everyone. It doesn't mean that this is a song that everyone loves and objectively it is the best song, but it is the best song for me. And I think when people choose a favorite song, it's not necessarily like all about the production or the melody or necessarily the lyrics, but more a combination of all those things with your own, like how much you can relate to it and how much you like it speaks to you you know um and i feel like this is one of those songs so if you relate to this song we might be very similar Okay, so just by starting with the title, Dear Reader, and the fact that this is the last song on the 3AM version of the album, it's like the perfect song to end with for both albums, I feel like. Just like, as like a whole work, you know? Because obviously, Taylor Swift has basically been writing songs and releasing them as kind of like her diary. And so, addressing us, kind of as like dear reader this is basically like dear everyone that's ever listened to my songs before it's a very reflective song it's a very like self-aware song there's not often times where taylor swift directly like addresses her audience in her songs and so just by listening through every single song and finally getting to this one i think it's like the 20th song if we're not counting hits different you've listened through all of these other songs and at the end, she just wants to give you a piece of advice and kind of reflect on everything that she has said. And I just really love that metaphor, that visual. And I think anyone that is a writer can relate to this title and this song. But yeah, let's get into the first verse here. So I really like how she just immediately addresses the person listening to the song or the person reading the lyrics. And she brings that in consistently. So you're reminded that she's talking to you. And it's kind of like, you know, a letter of sorts, a diary entry. Dear reader, if it feels like a trap, you're already in one. Here's like three little pieces of advice here like that's her structure that she's going with based on her past experiences she's trying to give little bits of advice in these lines and they're so concise but there's so much meaning behind them so this first line if it feels like a trap you're already in one so she's basically saying if you feel a certain way it's probably because things are that way if it feels like a trap it probably is one kind of like trust your intuition go with your gut type of thing. If it feels like you're in the wrong situation, you probably are. If you feel like you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, probably shouldn't be because if it feels right, then it probably is right. So first piece of advice, follow your intuition, trust your gut. And then we go to the second line here. It says, dear reader, get out your map, pick somewhere and just run. Now this is giving like 1989. She just like up and moved to New York to get out of your situation that you feel like is a trap. You just gotta get out of it you gotta like pick somewhere and just go with it kind of like take a leap of faith so to speak this is all about kind of like character development i would say in this first stanza very much like recognize what's wrong in your life make a change and then at the end of it if you feel like a completely different person that means you did it right like you learned and you lived and you made changes and everything and yeah so this part says dear reader burn all the files desert all your past lives i mean this makes so much sense for her at least because they 
think about how many different eras she's been through, different seasons of life that she's had. She's had like terrible, terrible years and then some years have been much better than others. She's reinvented herself so many times and I feel like as people we're kind of supposed to go through this cycle of changing, reinventing, learning, and then applying that to the next version of ourselves that we become. This last line, and if you don't recognize yourself, that means you did it right. So, you know, I think about it and the person that I was like five years ago is so much different than the person that I am now. And it's not a bad thing. It was good for the time and everything that was happening then was good for then. But then as you grow up and you change and like have new experiences, obviously you are going to change. It's like almost inevitable. And then in the next five years, you're gonna change again. And then you're gonna look back at now and be like, wow, I had no idea what I was what was coming. So yes, this first paragraph is kind of just about becoming aware of how much you've changed, how much you need to make a leap of faith and trust your intuition because not all change feels good at the time, but the growth is good. Okay, and then we go to the chorus where she kind of backtracks a little bit and she goes, never take advice from someone who's falling apart. Now, she had just given you all this advice and then she's kind of like telling you, never take advice from someone who's falling apart. That could mean she's insinuating she is falling apart or it could mean like, don't take advice from somebody who isn't qualified. But here's the thing, we listen to all her songs and we kind of like learn through her life experiences and she's lived all this life and lived all these experiences giving us these, this advice. We learn a lot and we grow through her music with her because the songs that she's singing is very much about her life, but it's also the experiences of so many other people. So it is interesting to me that she says, never take advice from someone who's falling apart, kind of insinuating that she is always falling apart. But who isn't, honestly? If you can't take advice from Taylor Swift, who can you take advice from? honestly, because she's been through so many different situations and everything. And then on the, the end of the second line, she repeats it again. It's more like she's emphasizing it. She's like, no, listen to me. Do not take advice from me because obviously a lot of things have not worked out for me. But I mean, if you look at her life now, she's pretty settled with Joe and like has kind of really figured out how to navigate having like a private life separate from everything else. And at the very end of the second line, she says, you should find another. It's like the background vocal. You should find another. It's like, you can take this advice, but you should probably ask somebody else because I don't know if what I'm telling you is good advice because just look at me. So now we go to verse two. Dear reader, bend when you can, snap when you have to. This is really funny because it's obviously like, I don't know if it's obviously a nod to Legally Blonde, but you know, the bend and snap or whatever. Bend when you can kind of means like compromise, negotiate when you can. Not everything is gonna go your way, so you're gonna have to be a little bit flexible in certain situations. You're not always going to be able to get what you want essentially, and so if it's not a big deal, you can just kind of let it go and compromise, but snap when you have to. Now, if this is something that is not negotiable, it is okay to stand your ground, be stubborn, and be confident in your own decisions when it comes to something that's like really important to you, something that cannot be compromised on. So I like the way that she phrased that, which is bend when you can, snap when you have to. So it's like, in most cases, you could probably compromise but there's those certain situations that you have to bring the claws out and then we got dear reader you don't have to answer just because they asked you like no one is entitled to know anything about you you don't owe anyone anything and I think this is something she learned during reputation era she just was like I don't have to be in the public eye I don't have to do interviews I don't have to talk to people and I don't have to answer questions that I don't want to answer. She learned a lot there and also she disabled her comments so nobody can comment on her Instagram and so she can have that kind of control in her life and that no one is entitled to know anything about you that you don't want them to know. I think she's just saying like you don't have to explain yourself all the time and then we've got this last little bit. The greatest of luxuries is your secrets. There's a line in Paris 
that I think parallels to this a little bit where she says privacy sign on the door and on my page and on the whole world romance is not dead if you keep it just yours. The things you keep to yourself that are just for you are a luxury. That seems to be something she's learned over time too that the more you keep to yourself the better it can be because then you have less opinions. You have less of other people's input affecting your decisions. If you don't tell people then they can't have an opinion about it. And then the last one when you aim at the devil, make sure you don't miss. This is like, if you're standing up for yourself, stand up for yourself. Don't ever just concede because it's the easier thing to do. So if you're going to kind of like cast out the bad in your life, make sure to just do it. Make a clean cut. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that one. I think it's pretty self-explanatory here. It's like, if you're gonna call someone out, just do it. Um, and then we got the chorus again. She's backing it up. She's like, never take advice from someone who's falling apart. I feel like with Midnight's, we got a little bit more insight to her as a person. I think especially with Antihero, her talking about my depression works the graveyard shift and all the people I've ghosted stand there in the room, giving us more insight to her life behind closed doors a little bit and what, how she has to deal with that. So she, it's kind of like, here's some advice. You can take it if you want to, but I would never take advice from someone who's falling apart. I think that might be where she's going with that. And then this is my literal favorite part of the whole song. And I think I just like couldn't think of a better way to write this. And I think she, she always takes these very niche specific emotions and is able to articulate them in a way that it's like once you hear it It's like you didn't know you felt that way until she put it into words, you know, we have the bridge So I wander through these nights. I prefer hiding in plain sight This line kind of reminds me of I know places and also like dancing with our hands tied It's like you're trying to keep your life as private as you can as someone like her and trying also I think this could take two meanings. So first of all, we've got her keeping her relationship private and kind of like hiding in plain sight. She'd rather just be like sneaking around and not being so public about her relationship because that's when it's Good. And then the second side to this could mean just like I prefer hiding in plain sight kind of like you're hiding your real emotions underneath You're kind of like putting on a show if you're going through it But you're kind of just going through your day like you're fine and like trying to like hide that from other people Seems like she could also be going through that But I feel like a lot of people do that where it's like I seem completely normal from the outside but if people only knew what was going on up here, you know what I mean? And then we got the next line, my fourth drink in my hand, these desperate prayers of a cursed man. Then it's like you turn to some vices and desperation almost. This reminds me of a lyric from This Is Me Trying where she says, pouring out my heart to a stranger, but I didn't pour the whiskey. And in This Is Me Trying, it's kind of like that was a win for her because instead of indulging herself in drinking, to deal with it, she's able to open up to a stranger about it. Whereas in this line, it just seems like she's given in. She's given into the vice. She's has her fourth drink in her hand. And the second line, these desperate prayers of a cursed man. When you're at your low, you're just basically praying to whoever to you know, get out of that place. So it kind of, you can kind of feel the desperation in this last verse. It just like hits so hard. And it's interesting that she kind of like uses the phrase man because it's almost like she's referring to man as like a, like a general term, like these desperate prayers of a cursed man. So it's like she thinks she's cursed that she can't kind of get out of this, you know? I do wonder what Midnight this song is inspired by. Obviously, like she said, all of these songs are inspired by different times in her life. It must have been a time where she was alone. But then she goes saying, spilling out to you for free. You, meaning us, the listeners, spilling out to you for free. This is what she's been doing her whole life. She's been spilling out to us you know, every thought, every like experience through her music, using her music as like her diary, her, you know, and just like, we all have heard it. And so then she goes, but darling, darling, please, you wouldn't take my word for it if you knew who was talking. If you knew the mistakes I've made, like you would not be listening to me and my advice here. She really has like the weight of the world on her. She has said before, like sometimes it's hard for her to feel like a real person because of how many people look to her 
and kind of scrutinize her life and her music and her lyrics and it just feels like everyone talks about her like she's not a real person, you know? And so that's like the weight that she takes on. You can only hold that for so long and she's kind of questioning whether she is qualified to give advice or question if people should even be listening to her because she is being like crushed by the weight of all of her problems, you know? But it's like she still can't help but try to give advice. And then this last stanza, so good. It's like my favorite part. If you knew where I was walking to a house, not a home, all alone, cause nobody's there. This is where she kind of explains why she thinks you shouldn't really listen to her after she's given you all this advice because she says, I'm walking home alone. I haven't found what I'm looking for yet. If you knew that I was like about to go home and like be depressed, would you listen to what I was saying earlier? And then she says, where I pace in my pen and my friends found friends who care. So pacing in my pen, that's very animalistic metaphor to draw. She's kind of some kind of zoo animal fenced in this glass box and everyone's looking at her from the outside and she has nowhere to go. She's kind of stuck. It's hard for her to have friends because of how high profile she is and they can't relate to her. It's like easier to not be friends with her. So then she says, my friends found friends who care. So it's like they found other friends. They don't need her. So sad. This is literally so sad. And then the very last line, no one sees when you lose when you're playing solitaire. Solitaire is obviously a game you play by yourself. And so when you lose to yourself, no one sees because no one else is playing the game. And so when she is home alone and she's like losing this internal battle, it's like no one's around to see it. No one's around to like help her or you know. It's a very, very sad note to leave off on, on this song, but then she, in this outro, I feel like the outro is a little bit overlooked because it's like more background vocals. She says, you should find another guiding light, guiding light, but I shine so bright. She has been the guiding light for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people follow her music, fans, everything. And she's like, you should find someone else to take advice from, you should, you really should. And then she ends it saying, but I shine so bright, being like, but I'm so prominent, I guess. And she keeps saying like, you should find another, you should find another. It's very much like, you can feel this internal struggle. It's like, I love what I do and I love being able to share my experiences and help people, but I don't know. It's like, she's having imposter syndrome. I don't know if I'm qualified for this. I don't know if I should be giving advice. And so it's like, she's going back and forth and she's like, but I love my fans back and forth. And so it's very interesting that she chose to end it like this and kind of like fade it out with, you should find another. This is her 13th. I'll Album, technically like that is so much and for this to be like the most recent song like the end of her discography as we know it right now I'm sure she, I'm sure that Taylor Swift will put out more music but right now like the metaphor of that this being the last song she has released that's new in her career all the way from Tim McGraw to Dear Reader that's crazy to me there's a few songs that I think kind of are defining songs for Taylor Swift and I think this is one of them where you get more insight into her. I think a few other songs I'll name that I have the same feeling about would be like You Are In Love, obviously All Too Well 10, Change, Long Live. These are all songs I feel like are reflective and kind of highlight different moments in her career. Times where she kind of like looks back and reflects like as a as the present day person, you know? So anyways, I hope this was helpful for you and I hope this kind of helped you understand this song better. As always, please comment down below any thoughts you have about it, any opinions, if I missed anything, any metaphors. I love hearing people's theories and different interpretations of Taylor Swift lyrics. Obviously, they're up for interpretation. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know if you want me to do any other lyric breakdowns or anything from Midnight's or maybe, you know, some of Taylor Swift's other songs. I was thinking about doing some from Evermore because I haven't done any from there. So comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!